In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we exalt your name. Father, we worship you once again. We thank you for your mercy. Father, we thank you for the message that we heard this morning, the power of faith and the power that you have. Lord in heaven, many are becoming faithless today. Many ponder around fear, fearful of how to live on earth. And Lord, because of that, many have lost their faith. Father, we pray today that because of your message, you renew our faith. Amen. Father, you, remove our, you, you renew our strength and you renew our power. That, Father, you remove the spirit of fear in each and every one of us. Father, we bless your name. Even as we are going to hear your word again this morning, Father, talk to us. Father, continue to renew our strength. Renew our spirit as we grow from strength to strength. Lord, we bless your name. As we look unto heaven, Father, we thank you because we know that we're waiting for Jesus, your son. He's coming to take us home to life everlasting. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. We, we heard the message this morning about the power of faith and the power that God has and um, how Jesus through faith healed so many. When the blind went to Jesus and he said, believers thou me, the power that I have in me that I will heal you and he said yes and he was healed. The question that I have for you today is that do you have the same faith? Do you have the same power? So it ties into what we're going to discuss today. And it's going to be a continuation of the side the scriptures of last week. Why Christians are poor? Why Christians are poor? When we talk about poverty, we always look at at material things. We look at money. We look at material possession. But when the Bible talks about poverty, the Bible talks about both. Talks about material things and talks about spiritual poverty. There are so many Christians that are poor spiritually. There are Christians who are rich in their pockets and their material things, but they are poor spiritually. But our Father in Heaven prefers that we are extensively rich spiritually. Because of the fact that I'm not saying that uh, material riches is wrong. Well, let's hear what Christ said. Christ said that it is going to be easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Christ is not saying that the rich man cannot enter the kingdom of God, but he's saying how difficult it's going to be. The temptations that are attached to material riches. Because as you have those material riches, you become arrogant, you become pompous. And so many things draw you away from God. But as you are spiritually rich, as you are spiritually rich, it draws you closer to God. Because our Father in Heaven, He said that where your, tre where your treasures is, that's where your heart is. So if your riches are in Heaven, if your riches are in Heaven and your money, everything is in Heaven, then your distraction will be towards heaven. Your focus will be towards heaven. And every other thing about you is going to be towards heaven because that is where your riches are. Or that is where your riches is. But if your riches is here on earth, then, then you continue to be distracted by the material things. Now it becomes difficult for you to follow our Father in heaven. 
why Christians are poor. Like I have said, poverty is not only material things, but spiritually. But our Father in Heaven wants us to be rich. He wants us to be rich spiritually. And that is why understanding the power of faith, the power of God is very important to be rich. It's very important to be rich. In fact, you know, um, the other day, somebody was telling me at work that uh, one of the worldly singers, that she was saying that uh, she's lonely. She commands a crowd of millions of people who follow her. But that she was crying, that she was lonely, that she's alone. It touched me. How pitiful is it? You know, to say that you have people who follow you. When you come out on the street, people hang out your house and follow you. When you go to sing, you have millions of people. But yet, she's saying that she was crying and sobbing that she's lonely. Why? Because she doesn't have the spiritual riches. When you are rich, you are filled with joy. Joy everlasting. We will see. You know, when you are rich, Spiritually, you do not lack. But even David the psalmist he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall never want. The scripture says that the Lord in heaven will provide all things that I need. So there is contempt. You are never lonely because our Father in heaven is always with you. Because the Spirit of God that is in you is always with you. So you are richly blessed. There is no emptiness. But when you don't have spiritual riches, you become empty. And when you become empty inside, there is nothing more that is content to you. I know people who chase after money, nothing is ever enough. People who chase over material things, nothing is ever enough. People who chase after worldly, um, what is called enjoyment, is never enough. It's never enough. There's no content. But do you chase after spirituality like that i wish that the way that we as the children of god chase after the things of the world if we chase after god like that we'll see in the scriptures how our father in heaven wants us to hunger you know you continue to say that i am not full i'm not full yet you're chasing you're chasing after the lord you're chasing you continue to chase And you know the reason why is because, you know, we've said here before, we do not know who we are. You know, the beginning of success in life is understanding who you are. Understanding your talent. You know, a lot of people who succeed is not because that uh, they're smarter than the rest of the world. Is because they understand where their talent is. I never discovered my strength. I never discovered my talent until my final year in college. When we went to the hospital for rounds, so you round in a team and uh, we look at cases of patients that are sick and then I began to ask questions we had a patient that we could we didn't no one could figure out what is wrong with the patient I began to ask questions I began to continuously ask questions 
Why this? Why that? Why, why are we seeing this? Why are we seeing that? Why are we seeing this? And because of my curiosity, because of the questions that I was asking, after we stood there for more than an hour trying to figure out how we can help this patient, and then the consultant on the team, he said to me, he said, because of those questions you have asked, it has prompted me to ask the question, and I think we found the answer. It was the rare symptoms of a disease that is never seen in a book. The patient was presenting with a symptom of an early stage of one disease, but a late stage of another. But because of those questions that I asked, we were able to figure out what was wrong with the patient. And then we began to see how we were going to treat the patient. And then we had so many obstacles. But then I began to ask those questions. So what am I saying? That was the moment that I discovered who I was. That I was somebody who had a talent of innovation, a talent of thinking. Then it down to me. And I said to myself, so this is where my strength is. I have discovered today where my strength is. I'm somebody who thinks, who rationalizes, who continues to ask the question why and why and why and why. And then I trigger thoughts in the group all the time. Discovering who you are. We as believers and children of God, do we even know who we are? You know, we heard this morning the power of faith. You know, without faith, is it possible to see the kingdom of God? Without faith, can you have power? And that takes me to go back again. We've read this before, I think last week or the week before. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Why Christians are poor in wealth and in spirit. You know, when, when I discovered that, and then uh, I was talking with my friends they said they had known a long time ago that I had that talent but it's because that I never saw it that I was blind to it are you blind to who you are we read 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 you know it says examine yourselves in fact let's start from let's start from verse let's start from the beginning Verse 1, this is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mount of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before and foretell you as if I were present the second time and being absent. Now I write to them which heretofore have seen and to all other that if I come again I will not spare. Paul speaking. And he says, so this is not the beginning. He says, since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. Do you know who you are? He's saying you guys are seeking, right? You're seeking to find out the proof that I'm a follower of Jesus. That I'm a child of God. Which to, which to your word is not weak, but is mighty in you. He's saying... But Christ is mighty in each and every one of us. But do you actually, do they know? For though he was crucified through weakness. What is the weakness that Christ was crucified? The flesh. The flesh. The flesh that Christ was born into. That is the weakness. And Christ was born into the flesh so that he can show us how to be strong. Yet. He lived by the power of God. So he was, he was, he was crucified through weakness. 
Yes, the weakness is the flesh. The flesh had to go. Yet he lived by the power of God, the Spirit. Now he, as the child of God, God the Son, now lived with power. Do you know that? That do you know that when you give your life to Christ, that your flesh is crucified? It's crucified on the cross just like Christ was crucified. So your weakness is crucified now. When you become born again, you live as the Spirit of God in you. So it gives you power. Do we know that? We don't. That is why we run around all the time and we are afraid. We are afraid. I've said it on the pulpit. We have little headache. We are afraid. Little stomach ache. We are afraid. A little problem with somebody. We are afraid. We're running helter skelter. In fact, such that there are people who are teachers in the house of the Lord are turning back to the devil for power. You know, one of my brothers was telling me that a pastor in Maryland has a church, no, one church, and there were a few people in the church. And there was one pastor next to him who had a big church. He went to him and said, so, you know, can you tell me how your church is big and nobody is coming to my church? He said, I'll show you the way. Actually, that pastor was worshipping the devil. So the devil was helping him to bring people to his church. And he decided to do the same thing. And then people began to come to his church. But when the devil, the devil never gives. He always takes away. And then when he came to collect, you know, it's like debt. When the devil, it's like the devil, when, when he gives, it's like he's giving you credit card. You keep spending from the credit card. You keep spending. And he will come one day to collect. But our Father in Heaven gives you debit card. There's money in it. When you spend the money, there's nobody who is coming to collect it. But the devil gives you credit card. So he kept spending and spending and spending from the credit card, thinking that uh, the people of the credit card will not come. The devil started to come to collect, then he started to run. But God saw, can he run to who? He ran to the Father. The father is the one who has a lot of money. He paid all the, 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 the debt on the credit card. Amen. It's because we are... So, but then he said, for we also are weak in him. But we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. So as the flesh, just like Christ, the flesh was pulling him but. The flesh was crucified. It's the same thing. We are weak in the flesh, but as we give our lives to God and we become born again, the flesh is crucified. And then what happens to us? We live with him by the power of God towards me and you. And then he said, do you understand all this? Do you understand that when you're in Christ, you have power? So Paul is asking, do you? And then he said, if you don't, very simple, examine yourselves. Whether ye be, that's verse 5, whether ye be in the faith, examine yourself. Are you sure that you're a child of God? Are you sure? Are you sure that you're born again? Examine yourself. If you are sure you're born again, prove your own selves. When they challenge him, he said, well, if you're sure that you're, pro you know, you're born, prove your own self. How do you prove your own self? Show that you have power. As the temptations and the trials come, you stand up to it and say, my father is able to crush anyone that comes after me. He said that my father is more than able and abundantly powerful to crush all that come after me. It says prove yourselves. How are you proving yourself as a child of God? How? You know at work when they say that you should bend corners, you're bending corners. As people in the world are doing things that are not right with the scriptures, you're doing the same thing with them. Are you proving yourselves? 
You know, when you prove yourself, right? When you prove yourself, it means what? It makes you different. You know, there's a song that I, sang, I, I learned as a child from my late sister. It says we need to show ourselves to the world that we are the people who are able to serve our Father in heaven all the time. It is difficult. You know, when people are caught in corners, I had issues with some people who are who report to me at work that uh, because I refuse to do things that are not right, and I told them bluntly, I will never do whatever. Say, oh, this person does it. I don't care. I clearly said it. I don't care. Look, it's my license. I'm not going to do it. You can hate me. You can do whatever you want. That's your problem. I will not. Paul says, prove yourself. When they say, steal from somebody, he says, no. Because what I'm proving myself. When they say do what is wrong, you're saying no. Because why you are afraid, you're thinking of your soul. You're thinking of your soul because you don't want your soul to perish. Prove yourself. But then he said, if you cannot prove yourself, now he said, no, ye not your own selves. It means you don't even know who you are. You don't. You know, I'm, I'm somebody, I'm not afraid of anyone. I'm very, I'm somebody who is very nice and very kind, but I'm never afraid. I'm never afraid. I'm never afraid to take the leap of faith. You know, I've said this over and over on, on the poopy that uh, when they ask me to sign the paper, I don't believe in God. So I become a professor. I said, no. I said, well, you're going against these people. You are not going to get, you know, you're, you're looking for jobs around. Do you know how powerful these people are? You know, wherever you are looking for a job in the world, they have connections. I don't care. Because, look, I know that it doesn't matter because our Father in heaven, who provides the birds, who fly on the air, who do not farm, who also provide for me. Like David said, I shall not want. Means I'll be content with whatever God gives. Know ye not your own selves. Do you know yourself? Do you really know yourself? If you know yourself. If you don't, how that Jesus is in you? If you don't know yourself, you don't know the power that you have, how can I be sure that Jesus is in you? Are you really born again? If you don't know the power that you have, how is it possible? Except, now he said, except ye be reprobates. So I decided to go to the dictionary to look at what it means to be, except ye be reprobate. So there are so many things. It says somebody who's unprincipled, normally morally corrupt, worthless, no standing a test. So except you're not saying the truth. For or then to damnation. So, except ye are reprobates. Are you on principle? Are you just lying? Are you morally corrupt? So, it's that if you are saying that uh, if you cannot prove yourselves to have power, like we've saw, seen in verse 4, he says, For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. And if you don't know that you have power, if you are saying you don't have the power, if you are saying you don't have the power, then it means except you're reprobate. So it means you're not saying the truth. 
It means you're not born again. You don't have the power of God in you because you need to actually change your life. Your life is not changed. We'll come back to it. Let's look at other verses. What the God, the, our Father in heaven demands from you is because of the fact that we do not know ourselves. Why Christians are poor materially and spiritually is because of the fact that we are lying to ourselves. I've been lying. If you don't know yourselves, if you don't have the power, it means you're lying to yourself that uh, you need to re-examine yourself and give your life back to our Father in heaven. Let's look at John chapter 14 verse 26. John chapter 14 verse 26. John chapter 14 verse 26. Praise the Lord. John chapter 14 verse 26. Praise the Lord. If we're there, can we say amen? amen? But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Do you know who you are? If you know who you are, the Comforter will do what? The Comforter will bring what to you? Will teach you all things. Is the Holy Spirit teaching you things? Is the Holy Spirit teaching you wisdom? You know, I've said it here on the pulpit that, look, if you don't see the four squares of the so-called school that they call, you know, I... One thing that I was thinking was that instead of going to spend all this number of years, I'm not saying that uh, what I have studied all through my life is bad because the knowledge that I have, you cannot buy. There's no amount of money because I will tell you that I know a lot. I mean, when it comes to my work, when it comes to science, I know a lot. Exceptionally a lot. There's no amount of money that can buy that. But I began to think to myself that if you take your time as a child, you continue to study the Bible, there will be no wiser person than you. There will be no smarter person than you. You know, if you think about financial management, if you think about technology, if you even think about science, because if you read the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation tells you the end, about the end times, tells you about earthquakes, wars. You know, in fact, if you look at the Old Testament, you see how the children of Israel strategically designed when they were fighting wars. That is military, military uh, uh, education, to say. Strategic thinking. They strategically carried out their wars. Amen. But the comforter which is in the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. You know, whatever the Father, whatever, well, you know, whatever Jesus has said, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit will talk to you all the time if you have, do you know who you are? Do you really? That's the reason why you are poor. You are poor financially and poor spiritually because of the fact that the Holy Spirit is not teaching you. Do you know who you are? Romans chapter 8 verse 26 to 27 the book of romans chapter 8 verse 26 to 27 romans chapter 8 26 to 27 praise the lord likewise romans chapter 
8, 26 to 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Do you know who you are? You know, when you know who you are, when you are troubled, the Bible is saying that even when you are, you just close your eye, the pain that you are going through, even if you are just making noise, the spirit of the Lord in you knows, will intercede for you, will tell the Father in heaven what you want, what you are going through. Do you know the power? Or do you think that um, just kneeling down and you're just groaning, the pain, that it doesn't mean anything? But if you understand, if you understand the power that you have, the Holy Spirit in you will always intercede on your behalf. But if you don't know the power that you have, then, well, you know, there is no faith. And because you don't have the faith, there is no power. And then, have you examined yourselves? Are you sure you know who you are? You know, sometimes children of the Lord don't know. We don't. In fact, a lot of believers now don't know who they are. They're born again. They're children of God. But they don't know who they are. So, because they don't know who they are, they allow the enemy to trip, you know, and punch them all around. I pray that that wouldn't be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. That you not be a punching bag for the enemy. Amen. Acts of the Apostle chapter 1. Acts of the Apostle chapter 1 verse 8. Acts of the Apostle chapter 1 verse 8. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're almost done. I know that today I was given a lot of time but i'm not going to hold you up for a while i can continue and continue but yes i receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and yes shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth so when you become born again you have the spirit you have what you have power and you will minister all around the world But do you know who you are? Do you know that you have the power to carry the, the message of our Father in heaven? Do you? Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Do you? And he said, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, sorry, from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your moral bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know the power that you have? 